Hello there. Welcome to MA Fight Club. I'm the host, as usual, Manny Galarza. Today we're doing an interview with the one and only Alina Kolesnik, current PFL fighter on her way to the PFL playoffs coming up in August of this summer. She hails from Odessa, Ukraine. We're going to talk a little bit about the ongoing conflict in her country, her back-to-back -back wins, her last two fights, her qualification to the playoffs, just some of her background, and uh you know the blazing path that she's setting now for ukrainian upcoming mixed martial artists and if you don't know ukraine has a good history in wrestling uh, combat sports in general sambo and uh, not surprised to see a ukrainian woman like herself coming up and doing some good things we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about her current training and preparation of her playoff appearance her nickname is the cannon i want to know where that comes from and if you follow her on the socials on instagram Beautiful, tall, blonde Ukrainian woman, uh, but in the cage, man, just uh, yeah, a, a different type of athlete. Let's put it that way. She's the kind of person where I don't think you want to uh, cross her in a public setting if you are a woman because uh, she is tough, tough as nails. Oh, there it is. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Olena. Hi, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm no, waiting. it's okay. I'm waiting, waiting for you. And then I just, okay, I close my eyes for five seconds and, you know, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, thank you for making the time for us. We really appreciate it. No problem. Говориш по-руски, да? Да, да, да. Я говорю по-руски чуть-чуть. Хорошо. Okay, so let's get right into it. You qualified for the playoffs in London. All right, coming up in uh, maybe about a month and a half, you know. Uh, explain to me how you feel coming off of back-to-back -back victories. What's your what's your mindset? How are you feeling mentally? I feel great, um, happy, motivated. And uh, as I told you before this fight, that uh, one, more, one more step to the main goal. So I passed already two steps. And uh, cannot wait when I make another third one. So yes. I'm really happy. And, um, you know, to see London, when you dream about London, like since childhood, and now I will have opportunity to make it. It sounds unbelievable, honestly. So, but I'm, thanks God for make it happen. Mm, so just keep focus keep focus on the on uh, on the next target yes yes now are you doing well you could you can answer whatever you feel comfortable with but where are you doing your training camp for this next fight it's going to be different location you're right now in las vegas but uh, go ahead tell me where you're training at i think um after my fight everything like what was clear uh will be the same so as as i move to uh, vegas and i start to work with my coach dennis davis with uh, in a, in extreme couture I surrounded myself great fighters you know so i'm really thankful it, for do you th this opportunity to see every day in the gym do you think that maybe now? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. No, I hear you. That was perfect. What a show. Did you think that maybe the last two wins you've had, you had two wins in a row, is maybe partially because you made that change? Is that maybe you think that was a big reason why? I think like everything happened in the right place in the right time. So it's all together. And like, I cannot wait for next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you have a lot of passion. You know, after your after your last fight, this last fight, you were very you were comfortable with the microphone. You were very funny. You had a lot of personality. I think people didn't know this side of you and uh, you know, explain that because people think of you as like a fighter. They don't know you. They just think of tough, you know, 
tough female fighter, but you were like funny. You were you you were very just charismatic. How did you feel after the fight? Where does that come from? <laughs> this is type of my soul, type of my personality, as you said. Like I have a two person inside. One of them like cold, focused soldier, and other of them like me. It's like I have a proverb myself which I made by myself. In this world, you can be uh, only like, you have two, two choices. You can be uh, Neo or you can be Mr. Anderson. So these two people live in me. <laughs> in the cage, Neo is wake up and out, out the cage, I'm like Mrs. Anderson, Miss Anderson. <laughs> I'm so glad that you brought this up because when you look at your Instagram, right? You, you're a very beautiful, tall, Ukrainian blonde woman, very like beautiful lady, you know? And then in the cage, it's not so beautiful. <laughs> like uh, very like, just a strong, tough, you know, fighter. And so when do you turn the switch? Is it in the locker room? Is it when you walk into the cage? When does this Siegfried and Roy change happen? Uh, this is funny because uh, today I, I come in the gym and I come in the gym in, in a dress and I come to gym to say hello to Recep or to legend of K1, huge motivation, inspiration for me. And he said, it's the first time I see you in a dress in real life. Like, because <laughs> uh, in the gym I have only one mood, I'm a soldier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not come there to impress someone. I'm come. I'm come for the work. Same like as soon as I come in the gym and my fight camp start, different person is wake up. Like different spirit. It's totally change. And uh, when I prepare for the fight, I don't have any distractions. Like go outside. Like you know, relax somewhere. Even like I'm totally focused. I'm like um. Mm, I like a monk or noon in mountains, you know, mm -hmm. totally focused on the one target. And as soon as, uh, as soon as target done, oh, <laughs> I change <laughs> and uh, one, another part of me wake up. So I, I like to switch us to change energy. You know, I mean, we uh, need to accept the fact when we go into the cage, uh, most of girls, who are successful you can you can see they have even like different energy like a masculine energy it's not about even how you look mm -hmm. it's about actions it's about how you move what you're doing the girl you cannot be a girl in the cage you cannot be a girl in the gym <laughs> at least you go to the gym for fun you know i for 15 years i never go to gym for fun like Every time when I go to gym, this is mean I looking for the new knowledge and I look into how to become better, how to improve myself. So, yeah, as soon as uh, gym, uh, like I make a step in the gym or I make a step in the in the out from airport to to the next fight, another person. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Well, you, we can see it. It's noticeable because you're definitely two different people. Even now in this interview, you're very nice. <laughs> and when we watch you in the cage, it's uh, very like an animal. And uh, it's, 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 it's the balance you have to have, right? <laughs> now, what, what motivated you to do combat sports? What was your first introduction to combat sports? Did you do sambo? Did you wrestle? How did this start for you? What was the introduction for you? It was a really funny story. Uh, since um, so, I grew up on, of course, a Hollywood movie uh, with uh, on uh, Steven Seagal, Jackie Chan. We all like dream about. We all dream about to to make some, not all, but I think it's something what was since childhood. But so I I dream about to make some combat sport. But my mom, like uh, she microbiologist okay she said like no never never all sportsmen are dumb <laughs> uh you have been if somebody punch you in the head you will die 
but the most important you will be dumb you know <laughs> for my mom so now i study i'm going to have my third and in two years my uh fourth degree but still my mom <laughs> say say when when last you when last time you read the book was that yeah i read yesterday okay 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 still like <laughs> you cannot be dumb i said okay this is the most important so all childhood no sport no sport at all but i have a like funny story mm, i have um i had unfortunately my grandpa my 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 mom father yeah Deda. Name, Deda. yeah yeah his uh, name was uh, peter and uh, grandpa and so my my mom my dad they little bit even smaller than me but you're tall though grandpa, you're but you're very tall yes but my grandpa uh, he was huge a uh, huge breast tall like a beer you know <laughs> and uh, most part of my childhood i grew up with him and i remember like he he the person who uh teach me how to read at four years old He's a person with whom I watch in uh, boxing fights, you know, sitting on his knees, watching Vladimir Vitali Klitschko, watching some USA pro boxers. So, yeah, like, and this is so crazy about our memories and how much what we see in childhood uh, have influence on us. And every morning he wake up and he make so I don't know, he just throw punches. It was shadow boxing. Now I understand what was it. But when I was small, I sit, I don't know how even old I was. I sit on this, uh, where child make a poo? I forget the, <laughs> so I sit on this. Yeah. I remember still, I'm not sure how, like two or three, I don't know, like really small. When I sit in like, grandpa was huge besides like i so, so small he was huge in uh, like even when i became bigger uh, like older so and he make a sh one two one two one two and i look hmm what, what's a strange dance he making you know <laughs> oh okay whatever like grandpa is cool so no problem so yeah and this is so crazy that at 17 years old I enter in a uh, university, I'm supposed to be an English teacher and literature, actually, like, I make it, I make my parents' dream true, so I have a degree <laughs> in it, so, but in the first course, as soon as I enter, um, I meet one girl, and she was so cool, she was so active, like, I hang out with everybody, I'm um, in real life, not social i'm more introvert you know i'm more close person who people who know me real this is like a really small circuit really small so when i met this girl and she likes total different uh, as me she can go out with everybody she do everything cool stuff and i look at her oh, cool we be friends you know i want to be like yo and she's like oh guys i'm st started to make a uh, sport sambo for me sambo it was dance it was dance. Yes, there is a the, form of dance called sambo. You know, That's right. <laughs> it, was like, it was dance for me at all. And I, and I like, oh, what is it? She said, oh, you can kick everybody's ass. <laughs> and I think like, oh, it's cool. It's cool. I would like because if uh, tell more true uh, when I was uh, so when I was at uh, at uh, at school, I was. Uh, Maybe I'm still a nerd. I was <laughs> totally in the books, not communicate with a lot of people. And I pretty love this life. I'm still like, uh, prefer to be at home, to read books, you know, like I'm future fan of Harry Potter. <laughs> so, so yeah, but I look at you and I think, oh, okay, I go with you. I was so scared, you know, I said, take me with you to, to the gym. Show me what, 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 what is it? Show me. <laughs> All this fighting, right? <laughs> yeah. What is this? So uh, it's mean I can learn how to protect myself from some crazy people, you know? So yeah, because at school I was bullying. Mm.
Почему? А школа я возбуден, потому что я учился в, как, я учился в богатой школе, и я из, как, say, not so, like, not totally poor, but like in the medium level level family, you know. And my school was rich. It was like a, not oh, so, like regular so, school. So you were you kind. were you were like middle class regular kid going to school with all the rich kids who looked at you like you were the poor kid. Uh, no, actually, if you put me and them, I was a poor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, that's fucking true. And they look look at my clothes. I was in like like this, you know. And this is so crazy. Like to if we go looking forward, uh, as soon as I win national championship in Muay Thai, and they start to show me on TV, all these bastards who bully me that <laughs> like I don't have fancy clothes. I'm mm -hmm. like not so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. This is what they say to me every time. I was like, um, like uh, Anderson make, make, um, make um, story, like a duck, like a duck, you know, who, which which was bull, uh, bullying everybody. So, oh, Alana, I always believe in you. You're so cool, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Come on. Do you think that I forgive you, my friend? No, not at all. I not forgive you how you make you laugh jokes at my like clothes, you know. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm Scorpio. Scorpio uh, never forget anything. Never. This is crazy. So like and, like a, oh, go ahead, Dubai. And so anyway, like we go with. I said, okay, take me with you in the gym. She she took me with her, and uh, gym was at uh, university where I studied. So in the um, in the zero floor. So and this day uh, somebody turned lights off. No lights at all at all university. <laughs> and it's make me more scared, you know. Like the person <laughs> it's dark. Door, it's dark. <laughs> you know, it's fucking dark. I don't know where I'm going. You know, and and she's so cool, like she brave. After a while, I understand that this is almost fake, you know. Oh no! <laughs> she like in everything and no one. No, I mean, I mean, uh, she wasn't so serious person as in my imagination as I thought about her. But it's not problem. She pushed me for the first like step to make a sport. But so we go, we step in, and I saw two people, coach and the boy. And they in the white uh, gi, and they make some uh, judo samba tricks. And they was in the end of the room. I still remember this. I was 17, now I'm 31, it's crazy. And they come forward to me, and like the coach said, Yeah, hello. I said, I, And I was in the short dress, you know, like, like. Uh, <laughs> He said, "What do you What do you want?" I said, "I want to train here." And I, and the boy was like this, like I don't see his face. And when the boy turned up um, his face, I like, whoa, like you know, thunderstorm, boom! And I, I like, wow! <laughs> I fall in love. You know, it was like uh, boom. His name is Alex. And I said, yeah, I want to train. Did you ever make sport? Never. But I want to train. So, yeah. And every time, so I start to train three times in a week. So I study. After study, I go to train. My mom, really stubborn person. Her name is Elena too. Maybe all Elena like this. Who knows? <laughs> like, and she said, oh, my God, you will be dumb. This is my biggest fear come true. You will be dumb. Um, they punch you in the head. I said, Mom, it's sports sambo. They not punch. It's self-defense. Please. Yeah. Everything yeah. will be okay. She said, no. You know, I said, just just uh, during the study. At summer, it's close. So, no sport. Give me, please. Like, I promise to you. I will be studying. I have a good marks. You will see my diploma. I promise you. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, and every time I go in in the uh, in the class samba class i was the biggest loser in the class like samba guys who make since childhood uh samba girls uh wrestling guys like 
all in the in this class were like uh, people with experience i'm zero but every time when i see alex we still communicate with him <laughs> so every time when i see alex i like oh my god <laughs> like, <laughs> You know, it was like, it was, cra it was crazy. It was crazy. Like, no, like, you tight. No, I'm not tight. So I start to go every day in the gym. It was so crazy. So after a couple months, coach, see my, my passion, cause I'm like, I'm like a horse, really, really stubborn. And everybody's, I, I think nobody know that I fall in love with Alex. I know I'm really high. <laughs> but you know, when you have first, uh, first love. You cannot... first love, that's it, yes. <laughs> You cannot hide it. You have no idea how many times I cried that he didn't, he, he didn't give me attention today. <laughs> he not, he not make uh, like some tricks with me today. And I call it to my friend. Her name is Ina. I said, Ina, he ignored me. Oh my God, my word is real. You know, this <laughs> anyway. And he was really rude with me. Actually, he like, oh, you want to do? I said, yes, I want to do. Okay, like every time he threw me, like uh, he, this uh, this uh, samba tricks, and my legs was totally black, you know, because <laughs> of I fall down. I don't know how to fall down, what, which side, you know, how to um, protect myself. So it was really hard experience, you know. And as I told you, on samba, uh, it's close. It's close on samba, and I was like really really upset because there is no action there is no alex you know <laughs> there is no beautiful boys around like how is it? my word is ruin <laughs> and guess what this is crazy again i don't know why but i go to the one stadium with my friend from my um from my child uh, child from childhood childhood friend from place where I grew up, where I still live, my parents. Uh, his name is Slavik. He said, "Let's go to stadium. We go to stadium uh, to make some exercises." I don't know why I go with him. Anyway, and he said, "You know where I'm going?" I said, "Where are you going?" I'm going to be like a Jean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you know. And the most important, he said, "So you will be so flexible. You um, you can make this uh, Van, Van Damme uh, favorite." The Every split, three. the split. Yeah, I said, wow, so that's mean I can impress Alex, you know, like, plan is perfect, plan is perfect, let's go. <laughs> All summer. Uh, listen, uh, lucky for me and for my parents, uh, in my country, when you have all uh, A uh, for the uh, in indication, um, government pay you money each month. So, I have some some small some small salary let's call salary and i can pay for the trainings and i say mom okay mom i want to go to my thai what <laughs> because we call it the thai, thai boxing thai boxing <laughs> mom heard only boxing <laughs> she just heard mom <laughs> thought of the boxing. That's all she heard. just hitting in the she head said, <laughs> she said yeah <laughs> okay she said you said sambo. I said yes. But this, I said, mom, boxing, Thai boxing, Muay Thai, only for two months. Then studying, then sambo, not no more. First, so I speak with Slavic, the, the dude who proposed me to come. I speak with him. I said, so we go or not? Oh, I'm busy, I'm busy. And I was like, listen, I'm tired from you, busy, not busy. You know, you give me motivation, I'm going by myself. So I'm so, I'm Samba, you know, I'm Samba, like, how much? Seven, six months training, I'm like, I'm cool. No, you know, I'm sport. <laughs> zero, zero. <laughs> no coordination, nothing. So I go in the gym, uh, it was on an old, old factory. It was scared as fuck, but I was so motivation to make a split like one down, like nobody can stop it. And I come in this gym and like, it was two or three huge dudes. One of them was my future coach. And I come with him. I said, I wanna make more time. So and the one of them come to me forward, I said, you make some sport? I said, yes, I make wrestling, I make sambo. He said, okay, you can come Monday, Wednesday, Friday. 
let's try. No problem, I will come. <laughs> so I can only imagine how I look from another side. So first training. <laughs> Uh, in I think it's Eastern uh, European uh, habits in the boxing school, uh, in the boxing class, Muay Thai class, how people, uh, how coaches check your spirit. So they put you in a good uh, experienced man or woman. And if you give up, you not be a fighter. If you won't give up, like you, you can keep continue and have attention of the coach. So the coach put me against like experienced guy. And this dude from the first punch, bam, make my nose bleeding. Oh, and he said, oh, my coach name uh, was Max. Is Max, he's alive. So he said, oh, Max, like, she's weak. Like, I'm come here, not from this. Like, give me somebody else. And in my mind, you know, all this bullying from from school, all of this, like, come back and like, w what, what am I weak? So, like, I have forward two months before, uh, before study and sambo. I think, okay, I go every day now. So to tell, like, if we look forward after two years, I kill this guy. <laughs> wow. This is, I told you, I never forget anything. I'm, <laughs> you know, this is jokes about black books when people put you in a mm -hmm. blacklist. That's this is right. not a joke. In my case, <laughs> this is not a joke, motherfuckers. Just so you know, who tried to play a game with me? This is not a joke. This is like computer, which never forget anything, you know? So, yeah. And after a while, I understand that punch people and to know how you protect yourself it's so fun it's so cool and it's so great energy you know you not feel lonely you can like you spend a great time and great people surround you much more people than in the sambo class so i start to make more attention to muay thai and one tournament another tournament uh national uh championship uh cup na national cup the national championship one two three you know and this give me so much passion i i just can't stop i just can't stop and like for a while i was in a national muay thai team like champion european championship a world championship then like my coach said listen we have pausa in muay thai tournaments there is proposed to take part in boxing tournaments i said listen i see these girls they bet like motherfuckers i'm scared as fuck no like and most of girls in boxing like short hair tall tattoo you know like, <laughs> and then, no 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 i don't need this shit in my life he said we must and there is uh, my my coach uh again like same stubborn as my mom i cannot say no to him i say okay we go so we go in national cup not like rock local uh boxing tournament we don't start from easy way we go to national cup of boxing <laughs> where like the best girls be, uh, prepare before the national national championship so i go there and i i start to make a uh, boxing fight and i i think i make two fights first i win and second i lost one point one point and this is like again this sketch me i said what <laughs> one point okay so forward was a couple uh championship of uh, muay thai said no no we're going to make a boxing because <laughs> if i win national boxing i will be national team i will have money i will have a lot of trials so i will be cool and now i'm not scared these girls they same as me maybe they look different but they same as me i don't care so two months i was beaten like girls two weight class bigger than me like they she beat me they rest they she beat me they rest <laughs> so yeah and it was hard time i worked really hard and i come to national championship i think and everybody say oh it's a thai boxer disrespectful you know <laughs> thai boxer like what kind of it's not boxer you know and guess what <laughs> one one of op first opponent uh like huge experience 
boom, smash you. Second nice. opponent, uh, last year champion, smash you, boom. Final, final opponent, first round, because I was, I was tired because championship was one week and it's third fight and you know, like uh, with tough, really tough girls, huge experienced girls. And third, I lost first round and my coach and my corner, like one Georgian coach, uh, now he live in Georgia, he Georgian, you know, he said, why are you here? Why are you here? You passed so much. You, you going to give them your victory? You going to give, I said, no, then okay. So two round, no stop. <laughs> so I make points. Tuk, 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 tuk. And my race, uh, my hand was raised and the, the head coach of national women's boxing team, they said, wow, we, we not expect from this girl nothing, you know, like she's Muay Thai and what she shows, uh, like we impressed, we wanna, we wanna um, invite you to national women's boxing team. I said, yes, of course, man. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I, I, I shock everybody. So, and I was really happy and, uh, you know, step by step, boxing, Muay Thai, K1, everything was in amateur. Then come, uh, then come uh, pro career. Pro career uh, is everything. It was not so easy. It's hard, but it is what it is. Slowly, step by step. MMA is totally different sport from any kind of combat sport. It includes everything. Sometimes, you know, my last fight with Vanessa Mello. So a lot of people expect from me, like from my gym, da, they expect like, oh, make a war, smash, like aggressive, like, and like, I think I love, I love, I, I, I love fights. I love, I, I really like battles, you know, like you punch me, I will show you what punch, you know, but <laughs> la last year, last year winning the first round against Larissa Pacheca, my ego, which like, uh, I really work on it. So my ego was, oh, you everybody scared here? I don't give a fuck. And I make this stupid choice to change my uh, stand, like from South Park to Orthodox. I make this huge hook. Oh my God. And she catch me perfectly. Ta-ta. Like two punches. And like, good night. Boom. <laughs> you know? And I like stand up, I no, nothing happened. And in my mind, what fuck, Olena, fucking fuck. Why? Ten seconds before the before the end. You win mm -hmm. the fight. She cannot take you down. And you motherfucker like try to ah you didn't give what you show me. Show me what you got. Show me what you got, you know? <laughs> it was so stupid. Before she killed a couple people and you they decided to show your balls. Come on, be smart. But <laughs> You know, uh, about the fight, where the first fight with Larissa, it's so ridiculous. And when I fly to Vegas for preparation for second fly, uh, fight. So I didn't know with who I'm fighting. And Larissa know about that she fights with me. I know mm. about Larissa maybe two weeks before fight, okay. you know? So like, and when they say me, oh, it's Larissa, it's not someone like they supposed to give me, you know, like I was, Look at my manager, I said, seriously? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say no. I never say no. I accept every bottle. But it wasn't the smartest decision of my life, you know? So, and, but it was a good lesson. Yeah. It was a good lesson of uh, to be humble uh, and f lesson from God, definitely. Uh, good lesson to be, uh, to work with the good people, with the choose right coaches. Good lesson to, uh, choose right manager now i'm free agent <laughs> no more managers thanks god for this <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, this is good this is good yeah it's really good believe me <laughs> more, more freedom right you have more freedom M much more much more and you know like what the reason for when you waiting and you prepare for one person and then like oh you fight with larissa like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's not good last minute too I have to yeah. ask you, so you, you mentioned this gentleman, Alex. Yes. You obviously had this very big crush on Alex. And I don't know, I feel like I would not be uh, giving my audience uh, the fair if I didn't ask about what happened with Alex. So with Alex, uh, honestly, 
it was the huge tragedy. It's the huge tragedy of oh, no. uh, 18 years old girl. Okay, 18 the... had a crush. Had a crush. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it was two years I was crushing him. Two years, you know. Oh my God! Like crying, <laughs> these like tears everywhere, you know. So, and after after summer, I described that he he started to date with with a girl, and yeah, it's like a serious relationship, and she was totally different than me. Like punch to the heart, right? Yeah, yeah, like oh, you know, in my imagination, we already have a kids. Uh, <laughs> we already built family house. I already have a plan. I I'm a person on the plan on the schedule. Like I already have a plan that we do this, 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 and this not happen. <laughs> oh my god! So after like uh, like uh, uh, Alex uh, broke my heart. Listen, story is so crazy. So I think, oh my, oh like this. Okay, I will show you what you lose. <laughs> so you know, I start I start to date with the. Uh, most beautiful guy uh like alice was in the last course uh i started this with the course before of course before still old, older than me and i like look what look what, what you lost you know? <laughs> <laughs> and this is crazy look uh we have a um, party that we finished uh, university like it was 2012 and the story with alex was 2007-2008 2012 long time ago he, fi he found me in social media oh and texted me and he texted me you change so much you make so uh you're so successful in sport i'm so proud of you and i want to say i was so full i was so full these years you know oh my gosh like, i was really full and i said guess what too late <laughs> <laughs> Too late, too late. You know, this is my problem. You know, uh, if like I I fall in love, if I fall in love, I'm crazy. Like for this person, I give everything. You know, totally put myself. So, you know, and if I go, left left person in in my mind, you know, like that's why I don't understand why people communicate with their exes. I never communicate. <laughs> for me, for me. Maybe it's rude, but it's how I feel. For me, these people died. These not people in my life anymore. So I'm not communicate with them, and like I never come back to access. Uh, I not follow them in social media. What the reason for? They not in my life. I don't wanna. I don't give a. I don't care how they live. Like I have a friend Tati. I really love him, and she said, "Oh my God." I checked my ex. He started to date with a new girl. I said, why you check this? He died. <laughs> you already crazy. died. Seriously. Yeah. This dude in your in in your circle no more. In it's like let him fly. Fly to his hell, you know, to his ugly new woman. <laughs> so we don't need him. Like we You're so funny. You are so <laughs> funny, Ole. <laughs> so, so you know, uh, but of course I wouldn't say it was it was cool. To to read these messages from Alex, like well, it probably felt it, it definitely felt what they were. I'm trying to use the right words so you understand clearly, but like a feeling of like graduation in life. Like you had mm -hmm. gone to a point where it didn't matter. It didn't matter if he ever talked to you ever again. But the fact that he did reach out and tell you, you know, I was full. It, it made you feel a little good, right? Well, I'm not little good. I was. <laughs> I come back. So I come back. Uh, I come back. Uh, uh drunk from this party i think yeah like you know <laughs> so and i need my like social media and he texted me and said good for you but too oh. late. <laughs> <laughs> so you were thumpiani you were thumpiani when you wrote it back right <laughs> that's hilarious oh, so my. yeah like uh he still f uh, follow me uh in social media so i know it and sometimes he texts me some good words but for me it's like yeah wow so like wow. in my imagination we're supposed to have a kid <laughs> but you know i'm i'm really happy because like if um, we be together it's definitely we not speak with you now definitely not be usa and definitely not london nothing happened and definitely with a like typical ukrainian woman with a huge kids 
a lot of kids around <laughs> making soup. <laughs> like, yes, husband, what to do, husband? Of course, husband, house, wow. husband is God. <laughs> so this so is you, typical. You've, you've grown from this. You've become a more liberated woman, you know, more free, like you said. Obviously, you're in Las Vegas. You're halfway around the world. You're traveling on television. You're very accomplished. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he regrets it. I'm pretty sure he regrets his decisions. <laughs> I didn't care anymore, you know, but, you know, well, whatever, I, I, whatever happened, happened. It all happened for reasons, too. Good reasons. So it's been a long interview, so I don't want to keep you too much longer. You're amazing. You have a lot of personality, <laughs> and I could probably talk to you for hours. Can I ask you about your motivation right now to fight? It seems like the invasion of your country by Russia is part of your motivation two fights ago your last fight you were more calm after the afterwards you had a good interview it seemed like you were just more calm but two fights ago you can really see the passion after the fight you were very emotional obviously you represent the ukrainian flag you've got the flag behind you and we're wearing your colors today you see i have a yellow shirt with the with the blue the blue in the background the blue bottom we're trying to represent your colors of your country but how how is that affecting you now and is that a big motivation for you when you're fighting my country is everything for me. It's it's crazy that uh, so my hometown is Odessa, beautiful city, huge city, one more than one million people in the city, and surrounded by Black Sea and the sea and the like three hours driving uh, city of Kherson, and now Kherson is uh, Russian Federation, and it's happened for four months. And then they start to attack Nikolaev, where I got my second degree in uh, physical condition, like a boxing coach, and where I have a, a lot of great friends. And it's it's look like they wanna they wanna they wanna make them Russian too. And I have a thousand messages from Russian guys, not only from Ukrainian, that soon they will took my hometown to Odessa, you know, because it's <laughs> sweet pie for Putin. It has a mm. port. It's really beautiful. And I see like a Poland start to say, oh, we don't have a border with Ukrainian. Fuck you. Fuck you all. I don't want to share my country with anybody, you know. I'm, it's making me so mean, so aggressive, you know. Fuck you. This is my biggest fear come true, you know. Because you wake up and there is no more country that you got before already, you know, Crimea. I grew up in Crimea. Every summer I was in Crimea. My grandma was in Crimea, you know, like, what the fuck? Why I cannot go to Crimea anymore? Like now they took Donetsk, Lugansk, you know, now they're going to take Mariupol from us. And they say, oh, it's Ukrainian army attack themselves. Fuck you with your attack themselves, you know? This is really great. This is what they do with Chechnya. This is what they do with Georgia. You know, now Ukraine. Oh, this is what, ah, by the way, this is what they do with Serbia. So they, you attack themselves. Fuck you. And they call our, our my people Nazi. Listen, in my, in my city, more than like, I don't know, like so many nationalities. My city, 80% of Jewish people, like Jewish, gypsy, uh, Arabic, Turkish, because Turkish is near of uh, Odessa, Ukrainian, Belarusian, even Russian, you know, we have so many people, and you call, oh, there is Nazi. Fuck you with your Nazi motherfuckers, you know, we don't, we don't invite you in my country, we don't, we didn't invite, we don't ask you protect us, from fucking what protect us? I was studying, you know, uh, I was studying, I'm still studying, but now online, in two universities, you know, Everything closed now. Everything, you know, school closed. This is like my biggest, my mom's biggest fear come true. So she is a teacher, biology. I told you, like, she has a degree in microbiology, but she became a teacher of biology. Anyway, like, she said, Oh my God, this is not education, education at all, because this is fucking online. And the small, like, uh, um, this, sorry, I'm too emotional. So no, the kids sure. don't have such motivation as I am because i want to be smart you know when you're like 15 14 13 you don't want to study at all you want to play video games you want to go around you know don't definitely watch on the zoom on teacher 
most of them sleep <laughs> so you know this is make my uh, my people dumb when you not study when you not read books you easy to manipulate you easy to control you like fucking sheep you know so my biggest advice to all people who watching this interview are you still here da <laughs> no problem so my biggest advice if you don't want to be manipulation of other people study and educate yourself in in invest money in your education and don't waste all your time in social media try try to push yourself even if it's hard believe me it will works in your future you know whatever you make today it will work in three years forward so anyway no study so many like more than five million people move from ukraine and now they in europe in other country you know i understand that i'm really thankful for um, europe for all world for sport ukraine food for take our people to like they help me like my friend sirena Yes, so in the beginning I was here, she gave me food, she gave me some clothes, you know. I'm thankful for this. But this is temporary. This is not for forever, you know. We all, like, want to come back to our land. But the problem is, every day I check news, maybe, like, I don't have a home anymore, you know. I don't have a home, and this is crazy, because all, all my relatives, all my relatives in Odessa in a hometown, you know, all my friends, even all my exes in Odessa, <laughs> Ukraine, you know, so. <laughs> You're so funny. Can I ask you, can I ask you this question? Yeah. Do you have friends, friends and maybe family that are also on the Russian side? Do you have relatives that are in Russia or is all your family Ukrainian? Uh, I don't have, uh, definitely in some, like, long time ago <laughs> no 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 not long time ago i mean not uh, so it's not cousins it's not too close circle of uh, relatives but definitely someone i have you know we're not communication but i know someone live there but we not communicate maybe 10 years already maybe more you know like i didn't see them since childhood so i wouldn't call them family but i still have friends there in san Peter's book in moscow you know like i don't call I'm not Nazi, like they call us. Uh, like I don't say that all Russian are bad people. I say I say there is one small motherfucker who <laughs> try to like, you know. And I don't say my 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 politics are perfect, uh, perfect people. You know. Now what I see, they selling our land. They selling like our products because ukrainian land is really great for for raise uh for, for for raise fruits vegetables they sell my country S small piece here small piece there you know like i'm just i'm just sit and i just watch like my country like small pieces here and there disappear and like my mom like especially it's, for me it's hard huh? i'm 31 but for people who older, who grew up most of the time in Soviet Union, mm -hmm. to see this, listen, most of my generation was uh, uh, generals, soldiers, like, and one of them uh, on a, uh, uh, have a monument in the one of biggest streets in my hometown, where, where you can read that he was general in, in the World War II, you know? So, and like, who can imagine that in 2022 this this shit happened who can imagine this we were like so close so similar even languages you know you you can pretty understand russian if you speak ukrainian russian don't understand ukrainian but ukrainian speak russian like easy like this so it was it, all the situation make me so mean and especially like Every day I pray that my family will be safe, but I cannot relax at all. You ask about my motivation, I cannot relax still. They still in dangerous. They in dangerous every day. The day of fight, we have um, 
small village close to my hometown where my friend Pavel from. So at night before the fight, it was attack two, no two, three buildings with local people by Russian rockets. And a lot of people died during their sleep. So mm. in my imagination, every time I go to sleep, I pray my God, you know, that rockets not come to my hometown where my dad, mom, my small sister sleep, you know? So it's, it's when, you, when you're thinking about it, it's like a crazy horror movie, which not stop, which not stop. And from my side, I just like try to put everywhere like all platforms and I ask just stop the war in Ukraine, you know, stop the war, stop, stop to kill my people because my people dying every day. Like a lot of young guys for protection our land. Of course, it make, it make me proud that we are so spirit, we're so united, but like there is no man left. <laughs> no man left. How I make my kids in the future? You know, <laughs> how I built a strong Ukrainian kids, you know, I want a lot of kids after my fighting career. So yeah, if take it, if speak seriously, it's, uh, my heart is broken. Well, and... I, 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 I think you've been able to somehow use that to make yourself a, a little more aggressive these last few fights. No, it's not little more. It's not little more. <laughs> it's not it's little a lot more. more, right? <laughs> Listen, there is no mercy. There is no mercy for 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 my target, uh, uh, f target. I call my opponents my target. There is no mercy, not at all. After we can go out, we can drink, we can we can hug it, uh, like hug each other. For now, they all my target, you know. So and my main goal to be able, if not even if, when Russian start to attack my city, but because. I'm mentally ready for this because it's going to be. I want to be able to take my parents here to me. So I don't know what motivate these girls. I don't know <laughs> why they in the tournament. I have my own goal, so and there is no mercy for any of them. And whatever you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know who they give me for the fight before. Like now, I know it's Larissa. So, uh. <laughs> I don't care who will be, who I need to face. Even it, if we, if they put against me some dude from tournament, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Man, you are, you have a lot of balls, like you said. You have a lot of courage. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm going to try to wrap this up for you. I just have like one or two more questions. Okay. Number, number one, I want to give you an opportunity to thank any of your coaches, your sponsors, your family, Anyone that you want to thank, and you're also welcome to do any part of it in Ukrainian or Russian. So just feel free right now to thank the people that matter most to you for where you're at right now. So first of all, my godfather, I want to thank for it's Ray Sefo. Because for me, he is the person who saved my life. The person who called me to Ukrainian and say, like, Olena, are you safe? I said, and I was in Kiev which attacked by bombs. I was 24 February when the Russians started attacking Kyiv. I said, legend, I'm not sure about it. And he speak me one, one week before war start. Are you okay? I said, yeah, it's rumors. Nothing happened. And when it's happened, he, he was one of the first person who called to me. I said, like, Olena, like, uh, do you have opportunity to fly to US? I said, legend, like, uh, I need more time to find money to do it. And he said, uh, like, honey, don't worry. Like, we will help you. So wow. They, wow. They, took me, they took me from Ukraine. And I can't uh, say, I, I can't pray for Ray and for his family. You know, he is my, he saved my life. And this is crazy because uh, on the first tournament, so I'm a huge fan of K1. And uh, when you see the person who you watch fights and he like superstar for me, he is superstar, you know? And I saw him on the first PFL and I was so excited. And like, who care about some Ukrainian girl who lost two fights and two, uh, last one by KO? You know, who care, but- He, he cared, like, he cared. He like, he give his hand and like, he won 
he one of the he one of the strongest mentally and physically person i know and uh, like god bless him really i really love him like from all my heart so he like my he my godfather <laughs> this is definitely so huge huge thanks for him huge thanks for opportunity to train in extreme couture amazing gym amazing coaches like great gym you know and huge thanks to of course my head coach dennis davis one of the humblest person i know like uh, he's uh, so he's great you know just whatever a plan i make to when i work with him to trick him everything in he really really smart person you know really great fight IQ and god bless him you know and like i'm really lucky to work with him i tell him every time uh, and i tell everybody i'm lucky to work with him so and i not stop thankful to him to give me so much knowledge and to make me so much stronger and so much confidence i want to thank to my friend sirena the yesus invicta fighter uh i hope future ufc fighter because she deserves to be there already four fight wins uh four, four wins a straw uh, so in, in a row so and if your family like support me so much as soon as i fly here i want to thank for eric nixon coach from the gym too uh, every time kind to me i want to thank my muay thai coach uh from here like uh, they like <laughs> give me they make my legs come back so as you see i use a lot of kicks in the in the last fight i want to thank for uh, so much my ukrainian coach of condition sergey sipchuk he is like person god god sent me him last year and like my condition my mentally my physically like i'm on a different different level as all these years before uh he, this man is genius really smart really educated like a huge uh, like I, I don't know which books he not read you know he like so much he has so much knowledge and i'm so lucky to work with him too so yeah i want to thankful for all my guys who not give up and uh, my guys from jim samson and odessa they now in war so i, I want to like thank you for support guys i want to thank of course, my family are really stubborn <laughs> people <laughs> who still have a hope that I stop with all of this and make a borscht and a lot of kids. <laughs> so, borscht, the borscht, uh, borscht is beautiful soup. I love it myself. Yeah, I know. I cook. <laughs> so this option I got. <laughs> no, no, you you always have the option of going back, right, and being a mother in Ukraine, right? Yeah, but this is not my dream. My dream to be happy and do what I want to do. So, and actually, I'm. I make it it now so and i want to think first of all it's god uh, really like here in las vegas i visited uh, every sunday and every ma uh, every sunday and every saturday i visit uh, uh, orthodox church oh. and there is a priest he's serbian and uh, i make uh, every sunday i make confession and i told him like i know god not uh, happy about that i make fights but i want you give me a blessing for the fight with vanessa mello he said but what you're doing is not illegal i said what i said all my life i think i do a legal thing you know and i got mad at me you know he said i don't give my permission for this but it's not illegal for for our christian people i said well okay thank you so <laughs> this priest like uh unfortunately you know i have a problem with names but i definitely come back to him uh next uh, saturday and uh, 4 p.m <laughs> when it's uh when it start so and well, i definitely thankful him for his uh, blessing for the fight so believe go, in god guys <laughs> yes listen i i go to the russian orthodox church where we live at my wife is She's from Smolensk, but she mm -hmm. grew up in U in uh, Latvia. So her mm -hmm. family moved to Latvia and, you know, so they're all Russian Orthodox and they do the whole, the long ceremony. It's like at midnight. It's this oh, long ceremony. I know, ceremony. I know. Believe you me, know what I'm know. talking about, right? So yeah. this is uh, 
I'm Catholic, but whatever, same thing, Catholic. You know, you know what's thing. funny in my family? My grandma, is she alive, is Catholic. Another part of my family, Orthodox. For me, I'm lucky. I have two presents every time. <laughs> and I'm okay. I'm, go, I'm free to go to Castell, to Catholic right. Church. Right. I'm free to go to Orthodox Church. We're all Christian, you know, so... Yeah. If I have present here and there, like, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> All right. So I want to just give you an opportunity to give us like a, a promotion here where you're going to, you're going to thank MMA Fight Club. So if you can say something like, thank you, MMA Fight Club for, for having me on the show. Uh, my name is Manny, just to make sure you got that clear if you want to use my name. Um, but thank you for having me on. And we'll, of course, edit that. This interview, by the way, before you say anything, Olena, is the longest interview we've ever done. And, <laughs> and you have been a real pleasure to talk to. You. And um, I, hope, I hope you had a good time because we really enjoyed talking to you. you you've, thank you. This has been great. I hope it was good for you. Like ther therapy, right? Just sort of <laughs> talk and get it out. But, and I also want to do the best we can to to follow your 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 continued career you know we want to interview you again uh we we've uh, we've interviewed some athletes in the ufc we've got some guys in the top 10 we've interviewed some some ladies like roxanne mata ferry and raquel pennington and we've had a chance to talk to a lot of good athletes but your personality and just your your heart your passion is very unique and we really thank you for this time so before you say anything thank you thank you thank you ocean <laughs> priyatna <laughs> thank you guys uh, to interview me i want to say huge thanks to mma fight club and many it, it was fine fun time it was a long interview maybe one of the longest one in my fight career so i hope you enjoy it and uh, you know god with you god bless you all and the the, the main thing which i want uh, <sighs> which i won't stop to repeat it's never give up where wait my hand opa never give up <laughs> never never in anything well so, thank you so <laughs> much again no that's perfect that's, that's good that's good that was an awkward pause but thank you so much for your time olena spasiba orchin again spasiba orchin um get well best of luck with training um i'll reach out to you again we'll We'll Instagram you and stuff, and we're definitely going to be rooting for you and rooting for you Thank hard you. in the fight in London, okay? Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you. Can you tell me, please, when you make this interview uh, pub the, yeah, publish? Da, I'm going to work on the editing today, so it's about mm -hmm. 5 o'clock my time. Maybe this will be live sometime around 9 o'clock my time, 9 p.m., so like the next four or five hours. And cool. if and if it's okay with you, I'm probably going to use pretty much everything because it was great. You, your personality, people are going to love it. You're, you're beautiful. You're tall. You're Eastern European. You've got. You remind me in some ways of my wife. Like you got <laughs> str like strong, Tansilni, but also pretty. So you got both. Like you know, my wife makes borscht. She's great, but you know what? She's also a very independent, strong woman. She tells me how she feels. She's not going to sit in the kitchen all day long. She's a professional woman. I, I love her for that. And I consider her, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, just very strong people remind me of that. So, yeah, good for you. I'll let you know today, though. I'll send you a message, okay, in the next few hours. All right? Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. We've had a chance to talk to a handful of fighters. And by far, Olena Kaliznik really gave us the deep dive. She told us a lot about herself, her background, romance stories, her first encounter with martial arts, where she's at today, and quite frankly, kind of caught me off guard. This was uh, an amazing interview. I I'm so blessed to have had a chance to talk with Alina. We're obviously going to treat her to lunch because this is a lot of time, and we want to just you know thank her again for my Fight Club. In any case, thanks for joining us, guys, and we'll see you guys soon. Deuces. Yes,